Right, Ryan, wine tasting with Granny, episode four. We had two wines we picked from last week that we're going to taste this week. And the first one is... Okay. The first one is Planalto from the Duro, Vigno Branco Seco Reserva 2019 and Casa Ferrerina are the people who are um, responsible for it. Um, and this has been in, bought from um, Majestic Wines. I'm pretty certain I bought this from Majestic. Um, Is it 12% as well? It's 12.5% uh, oh. this one, oh. All right? A dry white wine. I'm just seeing if they will tell us any of the grapes. As its name suggests, this dry white wine is made from noble grapes grown on a plateau of the Duro region, um, sheltered from the Atlantic winds by the hills of um, Sierra do Marau. Um, it doesn't tell us. Uh, great varieties because the next one is in French line so you've got Portuguese, English and French on the bottle um, so I would have to um, see if I go on their website if they would tell us and let folks know another week um, so that's the first one we'll be tasting um, which we showed you last week no. put a little bit in my glass do you want to drop more? Yeah, I've got enough just to taste, thank you. I just might try done. some. So, that's the colour. I said it's pale, but what did Granny say? Well, I said it's not sappy green. Um, admittedly, when you're showing it against in the camera now, that looks pale, but it, 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 in, in the light we're looking at it, it's not what I call sappy green, and it certainly doesn't smell sappy green. Um, on the nose, you can tell it's come from somewhere hot, and it's got depth of flavour. You know it's going to be dry, you can taste, or smell it rather, on the nose. And because we've had some technical hitches, we have actually um, tasted, and then it went off, so we had to start all over again, which is why we've got some already in our glasses, so... Um, I'm just going to have another taste, and it, it's it's surprisingly long um, finish when you actually taste it. There's a little sort of can you feel a sort of slight like yeah. prickle? Yes. Again, that clicky. Um, and often it's not a vino verde, but the north of Portugal. So your vino, where Porto is, you'd get some vino verdes round there. But the Duro is on the Duro River, so it's a long way from Porto, right inland. And it's baking hot there in the summer, and that's where the it's obviously famous for um, port wine grapes, which travel down, um, probably not always these days on the boat, but they used to, um, to Porto to be made into um, port wine, the various houses there, mm -hmm. um, the well-known ones. Um, so this is a white wine grown nice. in the in the Duro region, but I think I think probably we're tasting it after. I, I will show folks what we had with um, with lunch, which which is a first. So we we will share that and we'll get that now because we we want to taste white. So for lunch we had a really interesting um, wine. Now. Wine buffs will know um, Tom Callagher, and he has a really good, informative um, blog. Um, you can join up, get his monthly newsletters. You will learn about wines. He has competitions. And the competition this month were, was, if, if you won it, because it's, it's a matter of who picked out of a drawer first if you get the correct answer. So there would be thousands and thousands all over the country um, going in for the competition. <laughs> um, we've been joined by Evelyn yet again. Hello, Evelyn. Right. Say hi to everyone. Hello. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. So that's <laughs> what so, we had with lunch. So it, this is a Brazilian wine because um, I went on the, the site. The competition was for um, six bottles of really interesting Brazilian And I'd never tasted Brazilian wine, so I thought I'll look on the site. And I just got four bottles. And they arrived yesterday, beautifully packed with... I'd be really careful, Evelyn, because they, that flap isn't out and you might well be hidden, but you'll bump your head if you're not careful. We're going to pause for a minute while we get Evelyn out. We'll be back. Right, we're back. Sorry, Evelyn just wants to wind haste, but she's not old enough yet, so we've got to keep her away. There Come on, go. Granny, share, oh, share. Right. Okay. <laughs> now, the only drawback with this bottle was the foil. It's like Fort them. Knox. It's much, much thicker and sharper really than sharp. any foil uh, I've ever encountered before. I nearly cut myself, <laughs> and uh, James didn't do as I asked to neaten it up because I, I probably will end up cutting myself. It's like Fort Knox. It, it's absolutely... It did come out of Bond, I noticed, um, the four bottles. Um, they were all different wines. So this is... Um, Don Guarino Sinais, and it's a Riesling from Brazil. And it's um, Alta Feliz, um, Brazil. And it's a Seco, Vinho, Vinho Branco Seco. They're saying it's a fine white one, um, 13%. And what do they tell us here? Estamos convictos que é um templo. So they're saying it's... Um, Delicate wine, um, precious and decisive, um, the, and and all the wines are like that. They're, they're saying that you know that that are made by Sinais. Um, Don Guarena Sinais Marca is uh, it's cultivated and are um, wines Alta Feliz. That's the sort of very Sierra. Gaicha, um, and so it's 29 degrees of sun, um, and the the terroir, terra, terroir, which is your sort of soil sort of things, ca character, characterized with a constant um, ex, ex, exposure to sun and um, winds, right? Um, that are um, so, so the the winds compensate for the, the the high degrees of temperature sort of thing, and express variety of, um, of our of our grapes, uvas is grapes, um, delicate, fruity, and intense. Should we have a look at the colour? So this is a riesling. So that's De more yellow to me. Yes. Is yeah. it? Yes, uh, it, that has got more depth, flavour. Look, can you? Yeah, those those are there. two side by side. Can you see? So that's the lighter one there. Where, where's my... Over that way a bit. And this is the other one. That's it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and this... It doesn't smell as... It's, it doesn't... It, it's... um. Again, you can tell it's going to be dry, but there's other flavours in, in there as well. And it, it's interesting the reason you can't you can't tell from the nose, I suppose because of where it's grown, I wouldn't detect necessarily a riesling myself. Um, I dare say people who who are constantly tasting wines and rarely in the nose. I mean it's golly, what is it, forty seven, forty eight years since I was in the wine trade, but um that is a really it's clean and it's got, it's, it's fruity and it is, like he says, intense. He's quite there right. There isn't any of that tingling? No, the, you don't the get the prickle. prickle. No, you don't the, get the prickle. The, the prickle, um, which often actually characterises quite a few of the Portuguese white wines. Um, and I wasn't expecting the prickle from a wine, the Duro, mm. um, like, because it's not like a vino verde. Do you know what we didn't do, Granny? We didn't rate this one. We didn't. So this one. I would need to go back and taste it again, Joe. And I'm okay. just going to this have. Is... 
This I'm is just going to have a little cleanse. I think that I would give it maybe four. I think I prefer the other white ones we've had, and I definitely prefer the one we've just tasted, not this one. I think it. I wonder if it gives any um, food suggestions on the back. Sometimes they do. I think it would depend. It's not a wine I would want as an aperitif on its own. Mm. I think it's a food wine, this one, to give it stew. Well, I'm glad I've tried it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not... I think some people love it, but it's, I, I don't... Don't go mad about it. Mm -hmm. And I think out of five, 3.9. Okay. We're about the same then, aren't we? Whereas this, this one, one, yes. This one both me and Granny love. No, and I, I think... would give it about a 4.7, 4.8. Right. I, I was going to say um, 4.5, I'd give it, yes. I mean, it, it is, exactly. I really enjoyed it. And That's... it's a first. Brazilian wine I've ever tasted. Maybe Granny's marking it down because it was so hard to open. <laughs> yeah, so it could have something to do with it. Be careful if you get mean, it. You might put your hands. I in. thought, what the heck am I getting into? <laughs> <laughs> it took me all of five minutes just to get the foil so I could unscrew the cap. <laughs> <laughs> right, red wine, and this is we are, and we like because it's got a sexy label. Look at that. And this is a Primitivo from Puglia. Oh, we were trying to find it on the map. Yes, so you we find here the, the Primitivo area. Um, so you see Primitivo. Primitivo area is so there. It, it's around that area. And we know Puglia. it's around here, but we, we haven't managed to find it. Well, that's a really old map. Definitely a really around old here. Map, but it's... So it's by the kicky bit of, of the Italy. The foot. Okay. So, so this one is this is a primitivo, right, from Puglia and the Pasqua. I've had had white wine from the Pasqua family. Um, well, on the back, that's why they've got this this interesting looking lady in the front. <laughs> on the back, it says desire, lush, and zin. Right. Wow. <laughs> so I look there we are. Zin. So let's see if the wine lives up to that label. <laughs> right. I like the shape of the bottle as well. It's a different shape. There we go. Thank you. Let's have a look. Oh, I didn't twist it round like you should do. That's because it's quite fat to hold. And twist at the same time if you've got arthritis in your hands. Is it more red than purple? Well, it's it's a young one and it's sort of bluishy, purpley tinge. You can tell, but it's it's um, primitiva is that sort of colour depth, and um, on the it's 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 pretty colour. Mm. And on the nose, I should think there's quite a lot of flavours to smell there's on the nose. So much, yeah. I think you're, it should be pretty intense flavours coming up at you. Mmm. There's a lot. Yeah. Masses. It, it's a very pronounced nose. Mmm. Red ears. You can, there's a lot to, not hitting you. Mmm. Well, do you know, that's remarkably smooth because it isn't that old. Um, if I say 18, 19, mm. 13.5 is it's 2019. That is a really nice wine. Um, it's well made. I could I I think drink you, that by the yes, bucket load. I, that is really nice. I th thought you'd like it. So that's a Primitivo, Joe. Okay. Right. Anyone knows but, me and is wondering what to get me for my birthday? But there's Primitivo, again <laughs> like Pinot Grigio, and Primitivos. I've had some which are, you think, oh golly, I think I'm going to get collie wobbles because they're sort of, um, but this is, <laughs> this is a really nice Primitivo. Um, it is. So they're, they're to be commended. The, the Pasqua, um, 
family uh, and it's it's like a lot of these names you probably come across a loads of Pasquas in Italy but um, this particular family I've had white wine of theirs um, they are good wine makers they know their mm. stuff and the the really big um, vineyards you have that's why wine is so interesting you have people who will look after the cultivation aspect of the vineyard you'll have people who see to um, pruning uh, um, then you've got enology which comes into it and that's wine chemistry winemakers today they have to have so much knowledge so it's the great varieties if they're going to blend um, this will be a straight I imagine um, primitiva I don't think unless they say they're putting no. any other grapes there in it but um, what will go because they'll experiment first well why don't we put a bit of that barrel in and a bit of that barrel in? And they sort of come up with um, what makes the best blend um, with a lot of wines. And these days, um, the really ultra-modern ones um, have stainless steel vats. Well, you, you shove something in stainless steel vats for six months and you've got sort of um, same as two years in bottle virtually. Um, so... That there are all sorts of things which come into wine making today, and it is an art. And there, there are some that are better at it than others. And th this is really lovely wine. What would we give it then, Granny? Well, you can go first this time out of five. I would say four point eight. Me too. If not a four point nine, I really like this red. I'm gonna probably drink more. And it's just. Just um, just to show you, I've kept a little bit. Um, Richard and Maricel kindly gave me, along with the Panettone, a rosy from the Western Cape. Okay. Now, I did have it in the week, and it's been it's now on its uh, fourth day, but it's got a lovely name. Hard, what did I say? Do you want to go grab yeah, it? I'll go and grab, it. grab we'll it. We'll just pause yeah. you again. So... We're back. And it's called Hardy Dar. <laughs> Rosie. Now, you can also learn an interesting fact. The, the Hardy Dar ibis is a rather prehistoric looking bird found in South Africa's sunny Western Cape, as well as being very noisy with an earth shattering squawk. They are very sociable and enjoy being in areas where humans live foraging for earthworms, spiders and small reptiles. Wow, I didn't know that I'd fancy living amongst those. So, <laughs> um, this rosy has been grown in the sun-blessed vineyards of South Africa's Western Cape. It is a fruit-driven, vibrant wine that would pair well with salads, fish, pizza and delicate pasta dishes. 11.5 and it is delicious, a great find. Granny, normally, you don't normally like pink wine, do you, I'm Granny? Not, so. not great. Um, I have had some nice ones in the south of France, but it took finding. This is a great find, Richard. I don't know where the heck you got it from, but you are to be commended um, for this wonderful are. find. Well right. done, Richard. Okay. Does it work the same as white when you spill it and you get the tears on pink or not? If it you was know, if sweet, sweet enough, then yes. You'd but still do the same this life. is fruity, but it's not. It's, it's not, not actually. It's not that sweet. I was expecting it to be quite sweet, but it's not. It, it's it's a really nice wine. Um, I like it, it just for the name. So. <laughs> Let's turn that down. What's there. not to like? But it there was very know. good. Um, I had it with um, Coquille Saint-Jacques, and I've had it with another fish dish. So I've had it, and I've had it with salad. With salad. And it said pizza. We all like pizza. So, um, this is its fourth day it's open, so. Mmm. Oh, it'll taste funny after that. No, no. Um, it might need a, need a biscuit or something. It's completely different from, obviously. It tastes... It, well, I don't know if it's because it's it's not helped because that red had so many flavours, so I don't mm. really... No, you should have done it before. Okay, I'm going to have a bit of biscuit because mm. Granny's telling me off. 
There we go. No, it's my fault. I just thought for interest's sake to give people the opportunity. And I'll have to ask Richard where he unearthed this wine from because I think actually it's, it's a lovely rosy. And I don't really bang on about rosy. Mm -mm. Um, and so I think that's great. I, I just hard, hardy da. What's not to like about a hardy da oh, rosy? That does taste different now. Mm. Now I've had that biscuit. Mm. Tastes nicer. There you are. Cleanse your palate, guys. <laughs> no, well, we should have white rosy and then the primitivo. Right. It all backwards. We'll be in trouble. So. Come on, Granny. There we are, what, folks. What, what are we giving this one out of five before we uh Well, I, sign really, I really enjoyed this one. And I would give it um, 4.6. I do quite like this one. I think I'd probably give it 4.5, maybe 4.4. Maybe 4.5 because the name's so good. <laughs> and look at the label. And, so, you don't, yeah. and the foil you can get out of these. Yeah, the foil that's not going to cut your hands open. <laughs> right. So um, we have picked up six bottles from Majestic this week. So we haven't decided which ones we're going to taste next week. Um, no, I'm just wondering. I'd better look in the box, see what we've got. And yeah, we'll sure, we'll let, let folks pause, know. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've decided, and I've chose this one because of the label, because I'm a sucker for labels. <laughs> it's a Sauvignon Blanc, but I just think that label's gorgeous. So, this is for next week. So, we're going to do a comparison with two Sauvignon Blancs. So, this one, 8,000 Lakes, I mean, what a name. That's from Washington State. Let's show you the label. Right. Okay. And the one I chose is from, um, where's that one from, this Granny? Is, oh, it sounds if it should be from France. Um... Let's have a look. Yes. Yes. Uh, La Belle Angèle Sauvignon Blanc. They're both Sauvignon Blanc. So we'll do a comparison tasting. So we've got those two ones. The next um, week. Sauvignon Blanc, one from Washington State and one from France. And so that would be interesting to try two white wines. Okay. Um, and if I've felt, because I'm working really hard on them, trying to clear up things and sort of... Um, you know, one if one's worked hard in the day and had a little rest in between, by night time one really needs a bit of a pick me up. And so, if I've got anything left over that's of interest, I might show that as well. But that's our two main wines for next week: comparison tasting of two Sauvignon Blancs. Do come back again. Hope you've enjoyed session four. So next week, session five. Thank bye. you. Bye.